What's up, YouTube? Shout out to all the subscribers. Shout out to everybody uh, giving me likes and comments. I'm almost at 200 subscribers. Can't wait till I hit 1,000 so I can go and go live with you guys, talk with you all. I'm um, very excited. Um, run those numbers up with uh, the comments. Even if you don't know what to, to say in a comment, a smiley face. I respond to like 99.9% .9 of my comments and hit those likes. It really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my video out there. Just want to say thank you and I'm going to jump straight into this video. Um, so uh, the truth about trucking, um, as you saw from the thumbnail, if my editing was okay, uh, that thumbnail is a, a particular trailer that I saw, and it was actually, well, more than saw, it was the company that I worked for, and I was supposed to pick that trailer up. I seen it messed up like that. One, when I went ahead and connected the tra uh, tractor to the trailer, um, and I turn it on, uh, straight up hear that air leak, man, just whoo, sounding like a damn fountain of air coming through it, right? Instantly, I could look at my primary, my secondary uh, air gauges and see there's just no way possible. While it was still connected, I go ahead and I look at it, and I'm like, man, how bad is this? I'm going to have to go ahead and report this. Uh, you know, uh, I, I need this thing fixed. Yeah, I was supposed to take that trailer and move it somewhere. I, I don't remember off the top of my head where I was going to go with it. But uh, I was doing regional nighttime driving and, you know, driving at night and then getting home in the morning. So I see it all messed up like that. And I, uh, I take pictures and I uh, called uh, night dispatch. I also... Um, uh, uh, texted the pictures and texted my concerns of how it actually got there. So uh, the airline itself had duct tape wrapped around there, as you could see through the picture, uh, and that, that duct tape isn't doing anything. Then you see just all the other cordages <laughs> uh, being all ripped up and messed up. I mean, nothing worked on it, like the clearance lights, the back lights, um, you know, all that, uh, you know, looks like electrical lines to me, but that air leak was uh, one of the massivest ones. I don't even know how it got there without um, ultimate uh, catastrophe of um, your primary and secondary um, uh, air, uh, air just literally shooting out your knobs. And if that happens, like if your primary and secondary get to, I believe, uh, under 60 PSI, instantly what happens is uh your air brakes um stop like uh it needs to prevent it uh, you know it knows that you do not have enough uh, uh air in your in your uh, your lines and in your tanks to actually come to a complete stop <clears throat> so what it does is it's uh to stop them uh stop um you know a failure of you not being able to hit your brakes and uh you know uh stopping right so what it does is it shoots out your knobs and by doing that it turns off your brakes now it's it's stuck so all of a sudden you could be driving down the freeway and you have a, a major air leak like that or having any air leak over time you can go ahead and do it right but uh something that severe uh you literally can't go very far without it doing that so um like might not even make it out of the parking lot whoever got it there um i'm not too sure how how, the, how that happened but well i know it was extremely dangerous and extremely illegal right um if a dot officer was to pull you over and do an inspection um just hearing an air leak you're getting rid of right that was more than hearing it that was um pure 100 percent negligence but if you're driving and uh let's say you're on the freeway and you're losing air like that and you go underneath uh, i believe it's 60 psi uh your air brakes lock up and you are just locks everything up man you're you're not moving uh you're not going forward and let's say you were doing 60 miles an hour and that's what happens now you stopped whoosh, now you're skidding that weight is pushing and then what about the people behind you what, what about uh the, you know basically that kind of like the turbulence you know are you going to be able to stay in your lane are you going to move over are you going to jackknife are you going to skid are you on snow are you on ice <coughs> you know um people uh behind you um you know uh gonna 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 run right into you you know uh what if you lose total control from doing that sorry about that quick edit um i am actually homeless and live in my car and i got uh i got videos showing that of why i became homeless and you know living me living in my car um i do gig apps to make money and i just got an order um i had to see you know was it worth taking um so but i'm back now so rock with me and stay with me on this so basically um that uh that trailer is is horrible it's uh, if a driver was to take that and uh, somebody um, became unalive or got uh, dangerously hurt, uh, negligence does not absolve you of anything. Um, as a professional truck driver, uh, you can and will be uh, prosecuted criminally um, for, for, for stuff like that, you know. Um, there's a lot of people that have, um, you know, that they took something that was too overweight 
and they could have stopped a lot sooner and somebody got hurt really bad well uh, that driver got hit with criminal charges and with a lot of companies you know is it cheaper for them to just let you go and 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 not you know let you use the company lawyer not them pay for you know like them not pay for it you know is it cheaper just to let you go uh, or are they going to try to stand in and take responsibility and when you get sued they pay they're going to let you go uh, you know nine times out of ten they're going to let you go they're not going to rock with you it is it is um, a, a better decision to get rid of you and let you deal with that and uh, and basically be screwed you know what I mean but you should have never took the load to begin with so that's where that's where it, it does land on you you know um, these dispatchers uh, really come at you to take those kind of stuff and that's what it, why I'm naming this video you know the truth about trucking <clears throat> I have uh, videos where I've explained bad uh, bad um, experiences and you know circumstances and uh, it being really really toxic and I, I have had gotten some uh, you know um, comments saying you know you're too imp uh, you're too worried uh, impressing other drivers you're, you're supposed to do what the dispatchers say uh, you know um, I've gotten some negative comments like that, and I'm like, you know, I think you're pretty un uninformed. I thought I've, you know, said, you know, 99% of my uh, comments, as far as I'm concerned, are positive. I appreciate all of them. It's, you know, you're taking time to write something, so I, I do appreciate it. Um, but uh, for those those few comments that that people were like, you know, you know, uh, you're, you know, you're 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 fine. You know, you're you're what's wrong with it uh, with the industry? No, no, I'm just not going to take things like that. I don't want to hurt anybody and I don't want to get hurt myself and I definitely don't want to go to prison for negligence and, and hurting somebody or, or worse. That will destroy their family. That's that's somebody, you know, why would I ever do that? And um, for the little bit of money you get, none of it's worth it, man. Nobody's, you know, it, it, it's just crazy to me, right? So um, I have that, uh, you know, that the picture for the thumbnail. I'll tell you a little bit more about that trailer. So, um these trailers are very very common to let you know uh they're constantly ones that are messed up this is a very perfect you know very good example uh, but so that trailer they tried to give to me my answer was hell no on top of hell no i explained how it how it even got there and the driver or the road service person thinking that some duct tape uh what was going to help it and what about all, all the, the ripped up cords you know um and no lights and everything else <clears throat> um I was very concerned. I didn't want anybody driving that or, you know, uh, uh, basically, um, you know, I didn't want it on the road until it really got fixed. So I, I reached out to um, Night Dispatch, told them how bad it was, told them that I expected for something to happen, give me a different load, give me a different trailer, I'll do something else because I'm not taking that. I let the person who, uh, daytime, the actual guy who runs the contract and uh, I guess you'd call him like the account manager or whatever. And then I also let um, his his assistant, but his assistant, his, his assistant is also a dispatcher as well. They're kind of connected to each other. <clears throat> I let them know. And I uh, the way I let them know is, is I let them know uh, in, in very big detail. Like, dude, that was unacceptable. Unacceptable. In fact, you should you should you should let that driver go, and you should really look at your culture for for, for even trying to roll with that. You know, um, about a few days later, I see that trailer uh, in the same condition at a different location that's about 20 miles away. So it was being shuttled um, from uh, one city to the next. There's no way stations um, uh, in that 20 miles. There's uh, a couple of a uh, couple roads, and then mostly uh, mostly freeway. So like a couple of uh, couple roads just tell you get you on you know get you on the freeway and then from there it's um you know 20 miles 20 miles with that kind of stuff and they know that the, they're, the chances of them getting pulled over are, are little to none there's no way stations you're not going to be called in <coughs> but the real dangers are literally the public and yourself and you know that is is crazy if they were to get pulled over they were to get inspected um I would hope DOT would crack down really crazy. You know, there's some crazy DOT rules um, that some of them don't make sense, but if they saw something like that, I would hope that they would, you know, be on top of it. I'm somebody who's been inspected five times. The person who actually trained me, who was like doing uh, truck driving for over 20 years, 
and who, uh, who had a degree in a, a, a master mechanic and everything else, master diesel mechanic actually, and uh, you know was in the Air Force and stuff like that. Great, great trainer. Um, this is my second uh, trainer, the one that I actually rolled with after I got my license. My first trainer really bad. I got a video on that. I actually asked that you guys check out my other videos of why, why I'm uh, homeless. I have a video that's not doing very good on views, but it's, I really opened myself up. Childhood uh, trauma is, I believe, what I named it, and it, I don't think it's doing good because like, it's graphic, you know. So it's a lot of trauma that uh, that I had when I was a kid, and I talk about it. So I do encourage you guys to check those things out. Um, so uh, a couple days later, it's at a different place, right? Like, what the hell is it here? At? You know, what what is it doing here? And I take a look at it, and it's still jacked up like that. I let them know again. What are, what in the world are you guys doing? <clears throat> I call uh, night dispatch. I tell them. Um, I think when I saw it, it was uh, it wasn't completely all the way dark. Like I uh, I started my shift between five and six p.m. and I normally didn't end till between. I mean, if it was if it was at that time, I'd probably end around four or five in the morning. You know, so they they really tried to utilize me at that time. And then of course, when I kept coming across trailers like this. <clears throat> and telling them I'm not taking it, suddenly I'm only um, getting something that I'm running maybe an hour or two, just something local, and then they don't have anything, and then it's like, wait a minute, I'm not making any money, and um, I'm not getting anything because you guys, instead of you guys fixing your problems and me making a living and, and having a good experience and having a good culture and uh, delivering this freight that needs to go places, you'd rather not give me the bad trailers. You're rewarding bad behavior. And good behavior, you know, you're rewarding bad behavior and you are uh, punishing good behavior. Good behavior is, is I see a problem that, that could, uh, and it's not a little problem, man. You know, uh, it's a huge one. You know, uh, it's not like, wait a minute, just one little top of your clearance light is out. I can go ahead and have it, you know, like I could push it 20 miles. It's just one clearance light. Some people do iffy stuff like that. And that's not, that's not too terribly bad. But a, a, a massive air leak like that and those cords messed up. Or um, tra uh, trailer doors not closing all the way, and you still taking it, um, you know, uh, tons tons of stuff like that, uh, or you know, big old holes in the side of your sidewall and your tires, holes on your tires, nails sticking in them. You know, you don't want to have a blowout. <coughs> you know, um, uh, it, you having air leaks, crazy air leaks. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. It, not going to roll with it and uh, not going to do it or um, you know a trailers that need uh, that, that that will not pass inspection and that are overdue so if I was to get pulled over um, you know it uh, I'd get in trouble I'm supposed to check that stuff it's called a pre-trip for a reason those are things that you look for however um, I think I might have skipped over some of the, um, my uh, the, my trainer had only been DOT inspected once I've been inspected uh, five times so, and I passed all of them, and that makes me look really good. It helps, I believe, my CSA score, and I believe, uh, I get it mixed up a little bit, but I know it helps my score, and it helps whatever company I'm with. So if they have bad habits and they get um, deducted a lot bit from, from riding dirty, somebody who that rides uh, clean and does what they're supposed to do, you know, as far as pre-tripping, pre-planning, and being safe, you know, going into the way stations when I'm supposed to, uh, you know, um, when, I get, when I get inspected, I pass it, you know, doing very well. So, um, there was tons of trailers like that, and that's something that you can expect, right? So if you go ahead, and this is the truth about trucking, so this is regional, so regional and local, and I've had um, uh, uh, three, well, two positions like that, and then I actually left the company um, that was supposed to be out five days and on the weekends, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about, a little bit about them um, right now. So the truth about trucking, after a lot of stuff that has happened, and I have a video about why I quit trucking, so maybe watch it after this, is um, uh, I do research. I'm like, I'm gonna you know, cross my T's, dot my I's, and they just lie and lie and lie and lie to get you in. They're like, our trucks are really good. <clears throat> Low miles, they come with the refrigerator. You're gonna get paid this. You know, you're gonna have to do that. And then the very last one, when I like, like when I'm still in orientation and they present me a truck, um, it, don't, it don't even have power windows. It's got over 750,000 miles. It is the worst truck, uh, well, worst tractor I've ever been in my life. Uh, the mirrors are uh, are all jacked up. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's in rough condition, and uh, it, it doesn't doesn't have like 
just does not feel good and it stinks inside of it not even detailed um you know i'm pretty sure that the seats don't even uh like you can't even adjust the seats over 750,000 miles um you know on, on the engine same engine same uh transmission <coughs> the suspension is horrible uh the suspension on most of them are are pretty bad excuse me one second I'm on a tail end of a sore throat. It's actually every day it's getting a little bit better, but I've had it for over two weeks and it's living in my car really, really cold at night and me having my windows just a crack. I think it's me breathing in my own breath at night and then turning on my car to, to heat it up. It's kind of like dry in here, you know, but nonetheless, uh, getting better. So that's good. <clears throat> so, uh, that, uh, that particular company lied, lied about everything. There was no refrigerator. It was supposed to be a uh, full-size condo. It was a, a lightweight condo, um, the, the, the tracker. And uh, there's a huge difference with that. A full-size condo normally has uh, two beds in there and has room for a refrigerator. This one, uh, it being a lightweight, the only way you could put a refrigerator in there is by taking one of the cupboards out or taking out the, the passenger seat. Um, yeah, if, I'm gonna go through. I have a, a bunch of pictures of stuff on a phone that um, that I used to use before I got this one, like you know, a couple of years ago. Or however old my phone is, but on my my, my original old phone, I had that um, I had that at a friend's house with like some of my uh, clothes and stuff like that that uh, I don't carry all my stuff with me. Uh, but on that phone, um, in future videos, I'll take some of those pictures. I have some of the pictures that are on this as well that I moved over. But uh, I'll, I'll try to add some videos and I mean add some of these pictures uh, you know to add context to, to what I'm what I'm saying I guess visually see what I what I'm explaining but that one picture right there that stands uh, stands out and I think it's a perfect talking point and it does illustrate what I'm what I'm going through when I'm talking about the truth about trucking <sighs> truth about trucking also every place that I've worked for my last paycheck I never got they uh, they screw you on that every single time if you give your two-week notice they're going to um, uh, you know basically give you the the worst crap uh, that you have to deal with um, that makes them the most money that's most frustrating and annoying to you then on top of that um, the very last week when you return to your truck um, and uh, you have to you have to return your truck you don't want a, a, an abandonment on your record Did that <coughs> excuse me if you get really annoyed and get really pissed off if you decide to just leave your truck at a truck stop, <clears throat> leave your truck anywhere, uh, yeah, they can put an abandonment on your record, and uh, that makes you look very untrustworthy. Uh, most companies will not want to hire you if you have an, an abandonment. Sorry for that in the transition. Uh, I'm out here making, trying to make money by uh, you know getting gig apps, and I had to do an order real quick. So uh, the truth about trucking, um, you know. I was talking about that trailer has messed up. Um, do want to, you know, give you guys some conclusions with it. So that particular tra trailer that was all messed up, there was lots of them all like that. Um, that was just, like I said, the best example. There's ones that were worse. Let's say, for example, um, the tandem release lever, um, totally missing, totally broken. Um, uh, you know, and I, I had, I know all the tricks. Like I know all the tricks with that stuff. Sometimes when you pull it out, it will slide back in. So I used to carry um, little vice grips and do it like that. Sometimes the actual um, tandem uh, release just wasn't working. It was seized up. So it was stuck all the way in the front. And no matter what, uh, with the load and stuff, I would never be able to actually have the, the, the right amount of weight uh, on each axle. And if I got pulled into a weigh station, then boom, I would get in trouble. Or if I went ahead and did a live unload, which I, I, I did live unloads and I would do drop in hooks, um, it all depend on um, you know what I you know what I was given. If it was a live unload, they always want you to slide your tandems all the way um, all the way to the back. If they're already stuck in the front, when I get there, they're not going to unload me, or there's going to be a big issue. Uh, and uh, you know, there's just a lot of stuff with it. They they could deny my uh, the live unload. <clears throat> These people didn't care though. Like dispatchers, the company itself. I was trying to. Uh, I was like, I was like, who's the driver that you keep giving that shuttle to? And in fact, I used to have to do that shuttle that was 20 miles. Um, 
I, I never did it with bad trailers. Um, they were all overweight, and I uh, I grabbed one, and like the bill, uh, the BOL, the bills of lading, would um, you know break down what's in there, and I'm like, dude, this feels way too heavy. Why is it taking like I, I I'm used to uh, you know coming to a complete stop. I know what the distance should feel like. Um, you know when I when I pull forward, I uh, you know I can feel it struggling and things like that. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take this, you know, uh, with, with this particular shuttle. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scale it real quick and see how much overweight it is. And then I'm gonna let them know. And then I'm gonna bring it directly back, you know? So I go ahead and do it. And I'm talking about over 10,000 pounds overweight, you know? Uh, and they're, uh, and I, I went back to the place and I was like, unload uh, X amount of weight. And they're like, no, we're not gonna do that. So the actual, um, the shipper, uh, was uh, was like, no, we're not going to do that. Another driver will grab it. And I said, that is a real horrible way to think, man. And that's a real horrible action, dude. I go, I go I'm go, i willing to take it if it's legal. And uh, they're like, no, uh, another driver will, uh, will take it. So um, you, you let your dispatch know that you're, you're not going to take it. I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, not much I can do, not much I can say. It's just I know what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm responsible for myself. And, uh, you know, I, I do look out for everybody uh, else, like, you know, if they have uh, issues and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's me who's not taking it. You know, I'm not going to take something that's bad. So um, I let them know. I'm like, hey, uh, not shuttling this. Uh, you know, look at this cat scale. Look how much overweight it is and blah, blah, blah. So whoever was also, you know, doing these shuttles, um, they were overweight and they were bad trailers, just like that picture and that, that in that particular uh, one is exactly, uh, you know, that particular trailer is the one he was uh, he was doing it with or she was doing it with. I never found out who was uh, who was the driver, but I uh, I asked uh, two dispatchers, the the guy who was like the manager, uh, who was like uh, controlling the contract, and his little uh, dispatch assistant, um, you know, who was who had less authority. Like he always had to like if you asked him something, he had to. Find Find out from the big dude so um i go ahead and go hey who's the driver i go when do they start their shifts i'll take my personal car over there and i should have a conversation and tell that person you know i, I got friends that got family and everybody else the general public has them uh, out there as well i don't want this guy out there doing it man i go i go let me talk to him and tell him that if if all of us drivers, you know, I'm not telling them if all of us drivers, but this is what the conversation I would have had if they had uh, let me know who it was, and they never did. Um, when I would flat out ask them, they'd be like, "No, we're, we're uh, you know, we're on top of it. We're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna let you know. That's uh, that's company information, you know." But uh, this person uh, did that with that trailer a whole lot, and then uh, a whole lot of others. But if I would have had the opportunity, I would explain to him that. If all of his drivers did exactly, you know, um, stayed above uh, uh, the water by uh, following the rules, then um, the company would be forced to switch, you know, change the industry within, you know. And there was a lot of times I had conversations with drivers where I would tell them that, like, hey, if all of us stick together and say we're not taking um, uh, illegal stuff, you're not going to force us to do it, uh, then they have to change, you know change can, can can happen within and it can also happen with uh you know on, on the outside but that's what i was going for and it really what they what the dispatchers love to do and this is you know uh, the truth about trucking is is they want you to feel like you're the only one so if you deny that trailer like they're gonna say every everybody else will take it you know uh some of them actually say that they have class a licenses and they look like cyborgs and act like cyborgs and they're like a pencil pusher you would have never thought they were a trucker you know, they don't even really know how to start the damn thing. You know, they, uh, the way they explain stuff, like, you know, uh, gives me the, uh, the impression that they don't know shit about it. And that's the, the bottom line. And even if they did, um, you know, I'm, I'm the captain of my own ship, you know. So they would, uh, you know, they, they always want to make you feel like you're the only one. So let's say that you, uh, you, you were given three routes that night and you um, only have 20 minutes left on your clock and you didn't get the third one done. They're going to make you feel like crap. You know, they're going to try to make you feel like crap. You know, they're going to put their negative energy. Like, hey, when I give a driver three different loads, you should have had that down and you should have had, uh, you know, plenty of time. Well, you know, road conditions, traffic, um, you know, uh, 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 work being done out on the roads, you know, construction. Um, you know what? Uh, getting stuck behind a train. You know, <laughs> uh, I know that those trains after uh, 20 minutes, you're allowed to call uh, call it in, 
and uh, you know tell uh, you know I think it's um if you call the non-emergency 911 number call and say that this train is taking too long but they still there's some trains that they just don't care and yeah they get fined but yeah they're not going to really speed up you know what I mean I've been stuck behind a train for over two hours before and yeah I call I called it in and stuff and uh, there was nothing I can do uh, you know squad car did show up and uh, you know whatever happened between them is what happened but there was a huge line behind uh, waiting for the uh, a train that just you know was, was going and stopping and then when they're stopping it just we couldn't get through some car you know there's some cars behind me and in front of me that went ahead and could uh, could turn around I'm in a commercial vehicle there is no turning around <laughs> I'm stuck there and uh, and the whole time that's eating up my clock you know so if I can get something done it's not because I'm lazy but that's what they want you to feel like though you know they want you to feel like if, if there's an accident of um, you know you, road service took too long or road service didn't show up, or you're denying it for a certain reason, <clears throat> they want to go ahead and do this. And I want to reiterate something. So I did uh, I did OTR first, right? Did that for a long time. Um, and uh, with OTR, I didn't have, quite have issues like this. It was with a mega carrier. The other two companies that I work for, one is, uh, uh, is so like, uh, out, of, out of three companies, I've, I've worked at uh, a total of four, but I really don't count the fourth one. And uh, maybe I'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, the first one, absolutely mega carrier. I was able to get my class A <clears throat> uh, through them, right? And then in, in return, I had to uh, work with work for them for a year so that uh, I didn't owe them any money. Uh, number two, the second uh, place that I worked at is a mega carrier as well. I don't believe that they help you get your license, but they're a very big name. Um, it was a, a, a specific account that had... Um, I believe uh, 150 trucks, but they're big names. So this, it's not their their huge hub of where they got thousands of trucks and everything else. But they're they are mega carrier, right? Then the third one is also um, it's not a mega carrier. I would call it a mid level. I know that they have OTR divisions. They have um, out for five days, uh, home for two days. And then they also, uh, depending on what city and state that you you live in or where you're going to be working at, they have um, you know local uh, where uh, you could run at daytime or nighttime. Nighttime paid a little bit more and if I'm going to be coming home every single day so I'm doing like local regional like within three to four states of wherever you're at or whatever the their geographic uh, location is uh, by doing that nighttime worked better for me you know there's there's ups and downs I'm not just a solar power driver <clears throat> I do drive at night in fact when I'm driving a commercial vehicle if I'm going to be coming home every day I'd rather drive at night not as bad traffic um, in the summertime it's uh, cooler but there's other obstacles too right other obstacles is is uh, deer season you know uh, seeing uh, you know it's harder to see them you know um, also things are not lit up so well if you go ahead and at nighttime pull into a truck stop at two or three in the morning because you have to use the bathroom or um, you know if you use the bathroom one you're not gonna find any parking it your parking is done at like five or six at night uh 99 of the time right on top of that all the other trucks are piled in there some of them park right by the entrances and exits and getting in and out of them is a pain pain in the ass it's more than just a pain in the ass you can get stuck i've had to go knock on people's doors and ask them to to move and i don't care that they're 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 not in a parking spot i don't care um, what, you know what they're what, what what's going on with them what i do care is, is the only way of me leaving is you getting out of my way and you are you know you you plan on sleeping here tonight you know you're on your 10 hour sleeper berth uh you know time i need you to 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 you know uh move and and a lot of them uh why the why the the truck stops you know this is this is all on topic the truth about trucking why they um oh, why they're like that uh a lot of truckers are terrified of driving at night you know they're uh flat out you know and and that's why they, they're so hard to, to get parking you know most people um, want to park uh, before three or four um, you know uh, in the afternoon you know three or four p.m. you know they, they want to park and they don't want to drive at night I like driving at night but uh, what I don't like is is that when I'm ready to shut sh uh, shut it down not having a parking spot uh, so I had to be you know creative of uh, when I was doing OTR you know rest areas rest areas have a better chance you know <clears throat> smaller uh, smaller truck stops you know uh, not always going to Love's or uh, Flying J you know uh, going, those places get filled up quick you know they're bigger and they they have a better name you know finding a little small hole in the wall places I've even stayed at way stations that had had parking where um you know I couldn't find parking at all you know sometimes I've actually had to break down and pay for uh for parking at at a major place because I was that tired and, and that was the only way that I could uh, uh you know 
to my 10 hour uh, sleeper berth. You know, I need to shut down and I need to go to sleep. And they're not reasonable on parking. It's not a couple of bucks. It's, it's like around $20, you know? It all depends on uh, the actual location and, uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, that, it, like 20 bucks. $20 just to park my truck here? And, because they're crazy, man. You know? You know, the industry, uh, you know, the, the, the world needs, or the United States needs all this stuff to be transported. You get treated like crap. Everybody hates you, okay? All the motor, motor, uh, motor vehicles on the road, they all dislike you. You're big, and you're slow, and, you're, you're, and uh, you take wide turns, you take slow turns. <clears throat> you know, you pull over on shoulders to, you know, because, um, you know, you have to check, uh, check on your load. Um, you know, there's this, and then the places that you uh, pick up from and deliver to all treat you like crap too. They don't let you use, you know, lots, you know how many places I've gone to that will not have a bathroom for drivers? They'll have a bathroom for all their employees. Like I'm good enough to go ahead and, and take this, you know, 3,000 miles from one location to the next or whatever, you know, or 1,000 miles, 700 miles, or even, you know, uh, doing regional night, doing like, I think up to 300 one direction and 300 back. Uh, you know, I'm good enough to do that, but I, I'm not allowed to use their bathroom, you know? And uh, no porta potties or they do have a porta potty. They're absolutely disgusting, um, uh, you know, uh, I got my license uh, right when, um, you know, like 2020. So uh, a lot of them use that as an excuse and still to this day use it as an excuse. Yeah, you know, like, hey, you know, after that happened, we don't we, we don't supply bathrooms. How can a company care about, you know, like a trucking company, how can they care about you as a driver when they, um, you know, like the, the bottom line is, is they don't care. They care about the freight. They care about the money. They care about that stuff. Evidently, they don't care about safety 90% um, uh, of the time. The mega carrier for uh, for OTR, uh, they were they were different. So uh, I will get into that. But I'm, I'm going to talk about the truth about it, you know. And these aren't just like uh, micro fleet companies I worked for. I worked, uh, the second company I worked for was, uh, was, a, was a mega carrier. Uh, the third one was a mid-level, you know. They had, uh, you know, a few thousand trucks. You know, and they they were set up in different states. So, uh, you know, uh, one time um, uh, I'm a, uh, I was still with a trainer, and this is after I had my license, um, and uh, we were doing a delivery. We haven't uh, we haven't backed into the dock yet, but uh, I get woke up and it's about to be my turn to start driving in an hour or two. But it, we were checked in and the truck is parked and they're supposed to call uh, my trainer, uh, you know, call his phone and tell him a dock number and stuff like that. So when uh, he wakes me up, he's like, yeah, there's a, uh, they're not letting anybody use the bathroom. They're, uh, they have a bathroom for employees only. And I said, okay. And uh, I get out the truck and I have uh, some water and I got my toothbrush and I'm looking around. Is there any places that I can walk from here? Because now we can't take the truck. We're waiting to get uh, told what dock we need to go into. So I'm out there, and I don't see any uh, any places that I can actually walk to and uh, and handle it. So I'm out there brushing my teeth, and uh, I really have to use the bathroom. And it's not something I can do outside. It's I gotta I gotta use I gotta use the men's room. So I'm out there brushing my teeth, and one of them comes to me, and they're like, you know, that's considered littering. And uh, when they said that to him, I said something rude. You know, um, I told him I didn't care. Uh, it's biodegradable. It's not littering. I don't. I, I really don't care. And uh, I go inside there and I try to use the bathroom. And uh, there's like this, um, when you walk in, there's an office to the right, like kind of like a check-in. Like I think it's where, where the, those employees would like swipe their badge. And then there's a metal um, door and that metal door or whatever is like blocking. And I can see through that metal door where the men's room is. And uh, you have to be an employee to actually uh, open that door. People can walk out, and then people can walk in. If they if they walk, uh, if they're walking out, they don't have to swipe anything. But to get in, they got to use their uh, like company card or whatever. So I'm standing right there for about three minutes, and I have a real dirty look on my face, and I'm like giving everybody dirty looks, and I'm just telling you what happened. Um, you know, uh, I'm not doing this to make myself feel better. In fact, uh, I was uh, I was probably being very immature and uh, I was being uh, vindictive and being petty at the time. But I really had to use the bathroom and I and uh, I'm not I'm out there waiting. I'm giving everybody dirty looks and then this guy finally comes uh, and opens that door. And when he opens it, he goes to close it and he knows I'm standing right by it and he's he's trying to close it himself because he doesn't want me to go in there. And when he's closing it, I put my hand on top of that uh, that um, the door 
and I grab it and I swing it open like that, like why the guy's hand's still on there. And I, uh, I screamed, I got it, bro. <laughs> he looked at me like I am some crazy guy, but I'm like, I got it, bro. And then he moved out of my way and I walked right in there and I, uh, I used that bathroom and, uh, you know, you could use your imagination. I didn't leave that bathroom in, 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 a, in such a pristine, uh, pristine condition. You know, I was petty and I was vindictive and, uh, I didn't like the way they were treating me and it's not justifiable, but you know, I, I messed up that bathroom on purpose and, uh, you know, uh, there's inexcusable, but I'm just telling you the story. So I do, when I'm, when I'm talking, uh, my stories aren't like, I always make myself look how good I'm genuine and I'm honest. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I purposely messed up that bathroom. You know, uh, that's just what happened. Would I do it nowadays? No. I would like to think that I'm a better person, and I would, uh, I would, uh, I would do better, and uh, not not let their negativity get to me to, to to react that way. I'd like to think that, and I and I believe that I would. But at the time, um, you know, I'm not perfect. People make mistakes, and that's what I did. Um, the mega carrier place. They micromanage you a whole lot, which does get very frustrating. However, their um, trailers and their tractors are in way better condition. If you called road service, I think I only had to call road service a couple times <clears throat> for a flat, uh, you know, like a blown out tire or uh, the, uh, the trailer I was about to pick up had a flat tire. So before I could take it, I had to call road service. Uh, yeah, you got to wait three or four hours, um, but at least they show up, you know, they'll show up and they'll, and they'll do it. Uh, all the other stuff, uh, like, you know, running wise, you know, driving and, and working for them, they, uh, they don't care where you pick up and where you, um, you know, you have to drop off where the shipper and the receivers are. So there are a lot of times that you are in residential areas where you don't belong, you know, um, there are, uh, deliveries where you have to back up on a service road and, uh, cross traffic and, and bring it in. It's not as much, it's not as common as local and regional for me. Local and regional uh, for me was constantly. <clears throat> Sometimes when I'm pre-planning, where uh, like it's a new location I've never been before, you know, a, a new um, you know shipper or receiver, um, I'm looking at it and I'm pre-planning it, and I you know got my Garmin, I'm doing that, I pull up satellite uh, uh, on my uh, Google Maps, and uh, and I can zoom in, I'm and I'm writing everything down, I'm looking at everything because what if what if something should happen? So I pre-plan very well. I drop my little pin on the location. I'm looking to see where the dock doors are, and some of those the, a lot of times those satellites could be uh, deceiving. It, it it looks one way, but you get there and it's different, you know. Or you what you think you have an idea of is totally different. <clears throat> so um, you know, with pre-planning, uh, I would still call. So I'd call the I'd call those locations. I'd be like, hey, I'm a truck driver. I do have a delivery for you guys. I've never been there before. Is there anything you could tell me? How, you know, what's the what's the guard shack uh, policies? Uh, where do I pull in? Where do I? Where, where's the shipping and receiving at? And things like that. A lot of the times they don't answer the phone, or you're on hold, and then you call back, and then they're like, hey, we don't we we don't got any answers. Sometimes they they do answer, and they'll be like, hey, you know, yeah, we have truckers that call us uh, quite often, and uh, you know, this is what we tell them. You know, so sometimes it helps. It's you, you would think um, an, in uh, an industry like this would, um, you know, be like really, really, uh, you know, helpful. Like, you know, I'm glad that you're calling. I'm glad that you have my package. <laughs> I'm glad that you, you know, you are, uh, you know, doing your due diligence and want to know what our policies are when you pull in here. But the, the, the honest truth is, <clears throat> it's uh, most likely somebody not getting paid very much money who's very negative. Those uh, positions probably get filled up really, you know, like, you know, get hired and fired the same day. Uh, maybe their jobs are so stressful. You know, maybe uh, maybe, maybe they don't want to go uh, above, uh, you know, their pay grade and tell somebody, hey, instead of taking this exit, take this one. You know, um, one second, drink a little water. <clears throat> But, um, but yeah, so, uh, I, you call those, I you know I did my due diligence on pre-planning and then you show up and then you're like, wait a minute, I got to back it back up on a service, uh, service road. You know, it's like a regular, regular road. And then I got oncoming traffic going on the other direction. One, I'm not allowed to reverse on, on, on any road, right? I'm not allowed to reverse on any service street. I'm also not allowed to cross, cross traffic like that. Uh, I've had to do it before though. So yeah, the, the, the deal with the, the service roads are, uh, you're not supposed to reverse on them. And, uh, 
like I was talking about with the pre-planning. Sorry I had to edit. I had to get a Gatorade, man. <clears throat> the sore throat, uh, I can get like a tickle in my throat. And then I also, like I said, I do gig apps. So if an order pops up or uh, I get an offer on something, I have to check it out. But uh, yeah, uh, I would I would typically, because I'm, all, I'm already there, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver it. However, if anybody hits me and it's their fault, I'm still held responsible because I'm doing something I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to be reversing like that. And these cars are absolutely crazy. They have no idea what would happen to them if my, my, my commercial vehicle touches them. It doesn't have to go fast. It's literally 80,000 pounds, like, you know, up to 80,000 pounds. And it's, uh, it's incredible uh, what, it, what it can do. I've seen it. Uh, I've seen trucks that barely touch a sign, and it looks like something out of a out of a cartoon. The way it spins and trolls and just rips out of the concrete and flies in the air just by touching the side of a trailer when the, when, when somebody's making a turn. I've seen some crazy stuff, but that's another thing too, man. You know, uh, you're gonna see a lot of stuff. You know, the truth about trucking. I mean, you are uh, you're gonna see uh, really bad accidents. You're gonna see people. Um, you know. Uh, injured fatally yeah you, you know I've seen cars go ahead and fly off of uh, the road because they're driving too fast on ice they cut me off all rude and just barely you know almost skimmed the, t the tip of my nose and two or three minutes later when they're really far ahead of me I'm driving and I'm seeing them in a ditch and uh, of course uh, when I see that uh, I can't stop my vehicle uh, all of a sudden I just see their taillights or I see that they know their car is rolled I call a uh, I either call the emergency uh, number or I call uh, I call local law enforcement and tell them uh, tell them uh, you know what what mile marker and stuff like that and I have no idea what their condition is you know and it's uh it can really get to you you know it could be uh, some some of, some people are desensitized I know truckers who who um, wish that pe those cars um, got what they deserved when when they do that to them and I don't have that kind of uh, I don't have that kind of mindset I don't want anything bad happening to anybody you know. Uh, especially, I, I, I don't want to, you know, that kind of stuff could ruin me and ruin them and ruin their life and, and, and ruin uh, their friendships and their family. And those are the ones who are going to suffer the most, you know. I'm going to suffer because it happened. Even though it, it, it would be their fault, I, it's something I would have to live with. And I don't want that. I don't want that in my conscience <clears throat> and I don't want that in my heart. Um, other stuff that happens with, uh, you know, the truth about trucking. Um, so, an Omega Carrier, right? If, when I'm telling you all this is somebody could go ahead and you know uh, ask a question well why don't you go do that you know well with mega carriers uh, there are there are people who make uh, a lot of money in it right there's also people who don't uh, you know um, you sacrifice a whole lot and I got off of uh, when I stopped doing OTR I was like dehydrated for five days it is it is hard to um, stay hydrated and and uh, you know like I don't want to stop every hour or two. I want to, you know, I want to keep keep driving. And then at nighttime, I would drink water and Gatorade and electrolytes and stuff like that. But it just, you know, over over a long period of time, you start it, it, it gets to you. You need to be drinking fluids all day, uh, you know, to stay hydrated. You wake up, even if you're hydrated in, uh, today. Tomorrow, when you wake up because you didn't drink anything for seven or eight hours of sleeping, you wake up and your mouth is dry and you're dehydrated. You know. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they will, they will, um, you know, keep your last paycheck every, every place. Uh, I wouldn't even suggest giving somebody two weeks. I wouldn't even suggest doing that. Um, what I would suggest is, uh, when you know that you're not going to work for them anymore, you say that, you know, you ask for home time. And then when you get that home time, you, you, uh, and let's say that you only get two or three days of home time, <clears throat> you've been out for, uh, you know, for a while, whatever. You yeah, the two or three days, and you say, "Hey, I just need a couple more days of uh, home time because of X." Y. You, you make up, you make something up, you know, and then they give you your, your last paycheck. Because what they do is, is they're going to say that things are wrong with the truck that aren't. They're going to say that, "Wait a minute, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, there was this. We had to fix that. You know, oh, now that you're turning in the truck, you we're going to we're going to deduct money uh, for having it detailed." Another uh, uh, truth about everything with uh, uh, about trucking is when you're doing regional or local and you're uh, you're, you're you're doing switch seats, um, you know if you're driving a night or day, you have another driver who does it. You have no control if they smoke cigarettes inside the vehicle. You have no control of how like you can clean up your stuff right and be respectful. However, uh, you know 
the other people that are driving the truck could be dirty, could be nasty, could be stuff on the steering wheel. And then now you're not just cleaning up your stuff. You've got to clean up this whole truck that somebody made a mess in just for you to be able to drive it. And then um, uh, switching trucks constantly, you know. You're going to spend all this time to clean this truck and then tomorrow you're going to be thrown in another truck. Uh, one of the trucks I was uh, I was in, it was uh, pee bottles everywhere. The whole thing stank of pee, and uh, and strong cigarettes. And they and I and I was like, I'm not taking it. I'm not. I, I give me give me a different truck, please. Like, that's the only one we can give you. <clears throat> and they um, when they did that, I rolled all the windows down, and I had I think three deliveries, and I did the first one, and I was sick to my stomach of how bad it smelled. I shouldn't have never agreed to do it, but I was trying to make money. It was just, it was nothing about safety other than me me being around nastiness and uh, smelling and breathing was crap. And then the cigarette smoke uh, that, that was in there, you know, like it all, like the smell and stuff, making my eyes water. I'm like coughing, I'm hacking. I got like my shirt over my nose. And uh, uh, after I did the first delivery, I came back there and I said, uh, and they're like, what about the other two? What about, you know, acting like it's the end of the damn world because now they got to find another driver to do that or they're going to have to move uh, move up the, um, you know, the delivery time now that I didn't do it. And I would tell them, and I told them on that particular instance, I said, you go in the truck and do it, man. I go, I told you it smelled like nasty urine in there. There's pee bottles everywhere. I'm not touching it. Uh, it's it's ingrained into the, the the fabric of that whole uh, the whole piece of crap truck inside there. I go, there's cigarette ashes everywhere. The cigarette smell is disgusting, and uh, and it's just not safe. It's not safe for me to drive 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 in there. I go, I am way too distracted as a driver. I am distracted by the smell and the stench, and I'm distracted by uh, how nasty it is. And that's unsafe. And when you say that word unsafe, uh, they back up a little bit, you know. Um, on the smaller, uh, like uh, on smaller companies, they, they probably don't even have a safety team. I mean, there's there's um, you know, there's companies that pay a whole lot of money, but they expect for you to do a whole lot of stuff, and the whole lot of stuff is is literally skipping way stations, being overweight, <clears throat> you know, breaking the rules, and um, and th things of that sort. And then uh, with uh, with mega carriers, uh, a lot of them want you to do OTR, uh, you know, and with those OTR ones. I mean, it's for what you have to do and the micromanaging and what you sacrifice. To some people, it's worth it, you know. And uh, with everything that's happened to me, and uh, another thing is, is uh, I have a video talking about this. Uh, two different occasions, I had people pull out their ratchets on me, and I'm talking about their Fourth of July. Is pulled it out on me, and uh, it was uh, I consider it being the dispatcher's fault. Then. I go into more detail about it on another video. However, since you're here, I'll tell you what happened. Um, I, uh, I had a headlight out. I'm a night driver. I tell them it's already nighttime. I've already been inspected several times. I, like I mentioned, I've been inspected five times total uh, thus far. And uh, I tell them I'm not going to go. I'm not leaving with that truck. Give me a different truck. This is the only one we have. Okay, well, in that event, I'm not leaving this place with the headlight out. And I don't care that... Uh, I could tell the officer, you know, that I'm going to a truck stop. I'm not. I'm not leaving the yard with uh, with one headlight out. They say go grab one from another truck. I go ahead and do that. When I'm grabbing from another one, it's the uh, same dude who works. Uh, you know, this, the, the 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 dude works for a company, and he's a uh, OTR dude um, who goes kind of OTR. He goes out. Uh, he goes out at night, and then comes back like two days later. I'm grabbing the headlight, dude uh, wakes up, and bam pulls it right at me and when he pulls it right at me I scream don't point it point it at me if you want more details on that that's an uh that's on another video so I hope you check that out uh second time was is um uh I had to drop off the trailer and I go ahead and do that and I had to grab an empty and come back uh some OTR driver was blocking my empty I take pictures of that I send it to my dispatcher it was windy out I didn't want to bobtail uh back but I, I would have if I needed to but I'm like, hey, I got this truck right here, and I've already knocked at it, and uh, this nighttime, you know, it's like around midnight, I think. <clears throat> I'm like, uh, I'm like they're not, uh, they're not answering. He screams, screaming, and I don't really respond to people screaming. But he screams, he's like, he's like, well, don't come back without uh, that empty, and uh, I need you to do that. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I'll call the cops uh, for for you if you need them to do that, or threaten them, tell them I'll, I'll make their life a miserable hell, and that he, you know, he knows everybody around that area, and. All, all sorts of crap 
I go and I'm pounding on it and I'm screaming like, like not screaming at the person, but I'm like, you know, yelling, yelling loud enough for uh, whoever's in there to hear. Like, I don't care that you're sleeping on this property. I just need to grab this, uh, this empty and get the hell out of here. And then window rolls down, big old hand cannon, uh, woman driver. And she's like, I, uh, I don't answer my door uh, at nighttime. And if I do, this comes out. And I said, fair enough just need you to can you please just move forward a little bit let me grab this empty and get the hell out of here and she did basically both times kind of uh kind of uh my my dispatcher's fault you know and uh that, that first driver for the company he's like you're taking from drivers that's my headlight and uh and i was like listen because you're in here sleeping and you have a load because <clears throat> he's like i got a load in a couple hours i gotta leave i'm like because of that I, i'm gonna put the headlight back i said i could be a jerk and just take it you know, that's what they told me in the office to do, but I'm, I'm not going to be a jerk. He said, what are you taking from, from me? I go, I'm a night driver. They want me to leave right now. I'm not leaving uh, uh, with uh, one headlight out. I'm, they told me to grab one. These aren't your trucks, buddy. <laughs> buddy, these are not your trucks. These trucks are the company trucks. So if we need a part for one to help one, then cool. I go, I'll be reasonable and I'll be cool about it. Like, I understand you got a, a load in a couple hours. There's a truck next to you. I'll take that one as long as somebody's not sleeping in there because I am sorry that I woke you up, you know. Uh, had I known that you were in there, I wouldn't have came over and did it. I would have tried to find a, a different truck a little bit further away. I didn't know. So I, I did apologize for waking up and he didn't care, you know, about uh, about that. He's like, oh, I'm not mad about that. I just don't I just don't want that. And I, and I think this is bad, uh, bad on culture. No, it's not. It's not if, if if these trucks if if you were the the lease operator to that truck and I was touching it then yeah that's your property it's not your property it's the company's property and uh, that's exactly what they said inside the office anyways. <clears throat> There's uh you know those are just some of the stuff that I want you uh, to consider. Everybody has their own experience with truck driving. You know, uh, every every company uh, could be different. Some of the companies that I'm talking about now, people might say, well, you know, you really didn't say their names and stuff like that. Maybe they're not like that uh, 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 anymore. Maybe they're worse, you know. And also, I would think it's probably free publicity, and I'm not interested in that. Uh, I do ask that if you enjoyed my content, um, to please subscribe. I ask that you check out my other videos. Uh, please, you know, thumbs up. And, uh, you know, I ask that you rock with me. Thank you so much.